that's so powerful i mean i i you know i can relate to a degree because i'm not indigenous i miss dice um so i don't really have that like connection to any like you know uh first nations tribes languages and stuff like that but um before i go into that like i i think that's like really important especially as like an indigenous person to um reclaim your identity uh in spite of the colonialism that you know um spain has enacted the nation like the modern nation states in latin america now uh are currently enacting on first nations uh the uh, imperialism and colonialism of the united states and its allies upon our continent um and that's just quite powerful and quite a radical thing to do so um th that that's amazing yeah um i mean my my experiences are quite different because as a you know mestiza person who comes you know from a middle class background uh my experience with not only migration but my relationship to like spanish and my home country can be quite different um and especially because i think amongst and something that isn't really talked about in the latina community especially amongst privileged people is that like um white uh lighter skinned and middle class latina people really try to aspire to a sort of whiteness and class mobility um, and I did see that in my family, I saw that in me, um, but you know, like babies, like first steps in like decolonizing and unlearning that thing, that stuff was like being proud of where I came from, being proud of being Colombian, even though like, you know, people would call me like a drug mule or like, you know, oh, you're like a narco or whatever, or like you're a thief or like whatever for like being who I was or my background. Um, the like xenophobia and racism of like speaking Spanish in public uh, amongst like uh, very nationalistic uh, gringos, you know, and uh, and that was like my first foray into like sort of unlearning that kind of stuff, um, being proud of being able to speak Spanish and being proud of like uh, my mestizo background. And then, of course, you know, you hit the wall, which a lot of people don't like a lot of privileged people don't really like, um, don't really get past, uh, which is the acceptance of the fact that like Spanish is a colonial language. And even though it's in the context of like Latin America, it's a colonial language. Uh, and our identities as Mestice people are colonial identities that would not exist without the colonization of an entire continent by European powers. Um, and I think, I'm I'm quite interested in looking at like you know decolonizing from a mestizo point of view, but like that's a different conversation for a different time, um, and we don't have that much time left, so I want to move on. <laughs> but that was really that was really amazing. Yeah. Um, finally, I just wanted to ask you um, if you have like any influences that really or any people in your life. Uh, any writers, any poems, any even music um, that really influenced you to write poetry or cho or change the way that you wrote um, or impacted your life in a significant way. I know I'm keeping these like quite like big and open ended, but I do want to like give you the freedom to answer however you want, you know. Yeah, good question. Um, I think for me, oftentimes, like our most closest people, uh, like family, chosen family, like uh, we don't recognize them as artists and culture workers themselves. But I think my mom is an artist, you know, my mom is a phenomenal culture worker, you know. Uh, I think she's influenced me in the ways of thinking of care and being tender and, um, and how I show up in my writing. Um, so my family, my siblings, my grandfather, um, who uh, most of my family ha has been able to adjust their immigration status or, or pending adjustments. My grandfather unfortunately hasn't, and he's gone like over 50 years, you know, without returning. And, and some of the ways that he returns is like him reading his newspapers or drawing Oh no, his little pads, like little roosters and little like animals that he had back home. 
And so I think of like, of like how he keeps memory alive and how he cares for himself and his memories. Um, so I, I see that as a like influences on, on my work and how I work. Uh, my partner, my partner who does like incredible work uh, with um, tribal like groups in, you know, in the United States to um, around advocacy, but repatriating like uh, their like um, materials, their like ancestors uh, back to community and just seeing like, again, like the care and, and the ways of showing up for community. I think that influences the way that I like show up in my poetry and thinking of, or like the different cultural pieces that I work on. And, and ultimately I want my writing, my, my photography, my visual art, whatever it is to, um, to offer a space of like softness um, to whoever is struggling with like feel seen or staying alive or making sense of life um and yeah so i would say like my my family my chosen family my friends most of my friends all my friends are artists culture workers like uh like visual artists like graphic designers and so forth um so they influence my work uh, so Romy Torico, Chilean, um, uh, non-binary and formerly undocumented person uh, from Florida. Um, uh, they're like my besties and um, they're my Pisces to my Gemini. So they're, they, they give me all the water, <laughs> the water sign. Um, and then like larger influencer, like influences, like at the very beginning, uh, of my education system. I went to public schools. Um, I went to Pedro Albizu campus. So learning about Puerto Rican liberation um, really like helped me um, politicize uh, and then attending Frederick Douglass Academy. So learning about abolition and learning about um, from like my English um, teachers uh, or this incredible black like women educators um, who made it, you know, made it possible for us to read like Sula, Beloved, um, all books like Toni Morrison, um, Sonia Sanchez, um, all this like incredible, um, James Baldwin, like all this incredible work at a very young age that contextualized like, um, like racial analysis and, and, and um, my own like, um, uh, solidarity work with like um with on like racial justice and like with fellow like uh, black folks in new york city but also thinking through like black migrants as well and so um those have been like, my heavy influences um poets ken chen um who was a mentor of mine um who saw me as a poet when i was like i'm not a poet i didn't get into that mfa and um he was like you don't need an MFA, like you're good. Like you, you like, um, yeah, they're like, you're good. Um, um, who else? Uh, and other like undocumented like writers and artists um, uh, from Alexa Vasquez to um, uh, who like, I, I'm like, I wanna go through like the list of the anthology, you know, like all the folks in here, like people have influenced my work. Um, Aristides Gourmet, um, yeah, Toni Morrison is like a big, you know, writer of mine. Uh, Sonia Sanchez, um, and and the slam poets of New York City. Um, I grew up in spoken word. Um, that was one of the safe spaces um, that I felt welcome that I can go and tell my stories and also go support other storytellers. Uh, I didn't like the competition, um, but I appreciate the 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 oral storytelling and the performance and the just being unapologetic um, as an as a performer. And yeah, that's all the people that come to mind at that moment. Um, and filmmakers and photographers gotta give it up to you know to a visual artist who are like just. Um, who've done an incredible job at offering visual images to, to the page. Um, yeah. 
that's really beautiful i mean that's such a like beautiful mix of like people to take influence from like such a rich um environment and loving found family uh, around you and that's great like, that's amazing um i i myself like can resonate with like the um, with with uh, a little of that because like um here in manchester there's quite like a big uh spoken word scene as well and i actually started writing poetry um because of roma <laughs> um because there's a collective here called young identity which is like young um like young poets basically uh come together and like write and learn from each other and do workshops and performances and um you know uh slam poetry sometimes and um i quite found myself very um taken in even though i was like you know i had like mad mad like um what's it called uh identity no in imposter syndrome um, you know, and I'm like, I'm still like struggling, you know, I'm like, oh, am, am I really a poet? Even though I'm like, we're doing this shit, you know, I'm like, oh, am I? <laughs> you know, but like, but they really did take me like under their wing. And I learned so much from like Roma, from Shirley May, one of the directors of like um, uh, Young Identity, um, and from all the other poets who are there who are absolutely like incredible, like incredible people. Um, but yeah, that's, that's such like, um, that's really amazing. Before we continue, I am just going to say to like everyone who's like watching this at home, don't think that this does not apply to England because it does. We're talking about America, but it applies to England because this country has had so much racist bullshit going on and treats migrants like absolute shit. So pay attention. Anyway, <laughs> now that that's over, <laughs> um, I want to just end this um beautiful wonderful talk with you that i could honestly i could just like talk with you for ages but i'm not gonna do that <laughs> mindful of time um i want to give you the space to read whatever it is that you want to read from your works from uh somewhere we are human from anything you want um if you would give us that privilege Yes. Uh, well, thank you so much, both of you, for just like, you know, making this virtual gathering possible and for community to be in conversation. I feel like community should always be in conversation um, and to share like this virtual space. Uh, I'm just waiting for um, this trash day. So like, you know, our, our, our trash is getting picked up right now so you can hear it in the backyard. Um, there's also a baby goat somewhere our neighbors have it so i'm just gonna wait a few seconds <laughs> um i'm just gonna pause myself while i gather uh, a piece from my chapter all right if you don't mind i'm just gonna like fill the space in because a bitch likes to talk but um just like you know signal me when you're you're ready or um but i'm really really thrilled to have had you here um because I think we got some like amazing conversation out of it, um, especially conversation that to a degree isn't being had in this country, in the UK, um, especially outside of London, because London is like the cultural hub for everything and not like, I won't say not much happens outside of it, but like, um, you know, other cities aren't really centered um and i think we could really learn a lot from like what you've been saying from what you've been doing um and i hope we can like you know keep that like cross-cultural like community interaction and collaboration and organizing going because that's just amazing yeah thank you thank again you. oh thank you for that and um i feel like i've gone to the uk twice and um and i'm always like you know, where's the scene, you know, where's like the poetry scene uh, and not like the very established, like, you know, very um, straight, you know, like performance scene. But I was like, where is, the, you know, where's the scene? Where's the community space? But now, you know, like now we're connected um, and in my future trip, you know, I would love to like, you know, be in space with y'all. Uh, just, you know, hear you both read poetry and hear the rest of your community read. Um, and just being community and um, but let's work towards that I would like love to make that possible um, and hoping to be out there later in the fall 
um, for another project, but yeah. Um, so I'm gonna read from uh, Nostalgia and Borders. Um, and this is a self-published uh, six years ago uh, through the support of uh, um, my co-editor of this was Emilio Fiaggio, um, Ecuadorian undocumented writer, who's also in the anthology. Uh, and Romy Torico, who designed the cover art, um, did the layout, because back in the day, I did not know design. Uh, now I'm a little bit better. Um, but they were super supportive. And I, this is what I talk about. Like, our projects, are, our own creative projects are not done in isolation. Um, as many times artists and cultural workers are framed as like this like loner, like brilliant person who stays at home and doesn't talk to nobody. No, like our, our arts and cultural worker, um, arts and cultural work um, comes from being with in community as possible. Um, it's not in isolation, it comes from, from that. And so grateful for them. And the first piece uh, is calling cards. So I'm gonna read it. And then I'll read a piece um, to close out from Somewhere We Are Human. So calling cards is an ode to the calling cards that people use, may still use now, in like little square cards and you scrap the back, you get the number, you call back home. And sometimes they eat the money, like eat 10 minutes of it and you're left with five minutes trying to communicate with your grandma how much you miss them. Um, and it's not enough. Um, so here it is, calling cards. One, across oceans and land, working to connect one phone line with another, like an umbilical cord, these five, 10, 20 square cards are more than plastic. These calling cards have heartbeats. Two, we survived through phone lines, a cycle of dining numbers. On the other line waited abuela, on the other line waited memories, on the other line waited birthday wishes that should have been given in person while eating guava cake. But we, we were here and you, you were there. On the other line, we waited by pay phones. We waited for your voice. We waited, that is all we had. My dad waited for you, he still does. Three, how do you dial a loved one when your fingers have worn out from weaving too many memories, when your voice has changed since the last time you saw them in person, your bones have broken from their absence, your lips have weathered, your face is the only clue left of what they might look like now, perhaps it's best not to look in the mirror, perhaps you are too ashamed of holding on to old memories. Four. I can still hear Abuelita Alegría's voice. Abuelita, ¿cómo está Ecuador? Sí, sí, Abuelita, prometo que regreso. And then a long pause. You hear her shuffling the phone, trying to remember which side to talk from. She's not familiar with this technology. I call it old school, some call it poverty. Abuelita's gentle voice rocks me back to memories of when she carried me as a baby. My face lays flat on her back. She hangs up and I lay gripping onto her words, trying not to let go, never enough minutes. Five, calling cards don't have heartbeats anymore. They just hang in the store, teasing you. Now dad stops at the bodega for other reasons. His mouth curls up around the rim of the bottle, longing for one more conversation. I think he believes that with every beer, he gets closer to heaven, closer to her, closer to home. And secretly, I wish that was true. Six, the phone goes unused like the passport in my wallet, no more dialing and his palms rest spaces where my grandma is buried. And even then, even then, the lines on his hands create borders restricting him from getting too close. Dad wants to hold my hand, but mostly we look at each other hoping to find comfort. He says that I look like Abuela. Uh, thank you. 
Um, so that's a favorite um, of a lot of folks. One of my like first poems that I worked on, edited, and so forth. Um, yeah. I'll switch over to somewhere we are human and um, part of editing is that there was a lot of time that went into editing and working with the poets and the essays and the visual artists and um, it just um, it was a lot of labor a lot of labor of love um, and myself and Raina were expected to also contribute poems. And I was like, oh my God, um, after reading all like the incredible pieces and like, just like feeling really tender. Um, and so I contributed um, this poem um, and it's called After. Um, and it was a conversation with myself and other uh, quote unquote dreamers like uh, specifically folks under the dreamer narrative of like um, like young, educated, and like um, who in the United States are like uh, saturate the conversation about immigration policies uh, because they're positioned as like good immigrants and the class to fight for um, and leaves out a lot of our communities. So this is after. After. Like gold, a good immigrant doesn't tarnish. Like gold, we are extracted and polished. I shine on a magazine cover. Mommy cleans the same colleges I perform at. Baba Jetty is told to extract the last gold tooth he got in Ecuador. Wearing his new dentures, Baba Jetty can't return to bury his parents. He grinds his teeth at night for 51 years and keeps digging. I'm told to wear this green card across my neck like a gold chain spelling out my name. And then after we become gold, what do we dig for? As children, we had dirt under our nails from countries we undug after the social security, the numbers, the papers, the status, the jobs, the dream, don't our hands hurt. Maybe we don't want to be like gold. Maybe buried deeper, somewhere near our elders' feet. Maybe we are tired. Maybe I want to be earth, human, ash. So that's um, after from somewhere we are human. Um, I I feel like I left you all with like like hard poems so i'm gonna close it with uh this bonus uh glory <laughs> um part of like just like caring for folks who are watching this like um taking us through like a roller coaster of emotions so hoping to end it in like a sweet note not that immigration politics is like ends in a sweet note it's still like it's about the pain and an achy um but this is glory and this is for femmes um yeah, all the femmes out there. Um, so, glory. Mi mamá se levanta. A las siete de la mañana se baña sus pies bendecidos en agua es divina. Después, empieza con su maquillaje. Her brown hands gently holding the black eyeliner. For a migrant woman, these are lines she welcomes. She places her dark brown hair in a bun carefully placing bobby pins, like carefully placing lipstick, like carefully placing hope on this land. Mommy's knowledge teaches me that my wings are meant to be thick, meant to take up space. These are rituals I grew up with, so I repeat every morning, creating self into existence, between lipstick and softness, between borders and belonging. These are ways I survive, so I repeat, arching my eyebrows, jewelry over my neck, red nails pointy enough to hold homes, homes I am building, homes I left, so I repeat, adorning all of my genders like the gospel never sung at my church, this, we, become biblical. Let this be an ode to femmes of colors whose celestial eyeshadows crack the heavens, whose thick thighs resurrect possibilities. So I repeat, what glory we incite, what glory we create, what glory we fucking are. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time. Um, this has been absolutely 
fantastic conversation. And I think me and Jova will have um, another little bit of a catch up after this, but thank you so much for your time. It's been absolutely fantastic. Thank you. Thank you, Jova. Thank you, Roma. Thank you. Like, this is just incredible. And let me know if you need anything else. I hope this was helpful. I hope my audio came through and you didn't hear the baby goats and 